going for your standard Reaper Expand Flood. Link Speed, Double Queen, all that fun stuff. He's doing battle with the SCV, but here comes the Reaper. Get the kill on the drone. The drone's going to be forced into an extractor. There's the engineering play bay. Disrespect living up to his name. Let's see how Flood deals with this. Now, there's still plenty of time for him to expand if he wants to. He can take this low ground base. If he so chooses. It looks like he's going to poke out to the third. Okay, so he will get it down by the 320 mark, it looks like. A um, couple lanes try to sneak in for the scout. I mean, they basically get the scout anyway. They see the 111 at the front. NG Bay cleaned up on the other side of the map. Uh, okay, 326. It's still doable. For sure. Queen strap tumors on the ramps. Bainley Ness goes down for flood. Goes in for the turn. Queen down to half health. Queen picked off. Uh, these guys, unfortunately, were not moving, <laughs> utilizing all the creep that they could. Uh, so a little bit slow to the party. Flood will eat that queen and losses. And uh, he needs to think about injects once again. Or he's going to fall behind in production against the Terran. Two more Hellions come to join the party. And uh, these guys can straight up engage the Queens and get the kills. They would eat some losses. Flood drops a Spore, which is going to help him against the Banshee, but eventually. Two. Three. Four drones get picked off. Five. Disrespect backs out. Another Banshee flies to join the first. Disrespect, I think, being a little bit timid with his Hellions, uh, you know, compared to the damage he could be doing. Alright, this is nice. Uh, cancel on the fourth. Queens move out to intercept, but we're a little bit slow to the party once again. Disrespect is going to run by the Queens, see if he, uh, is he though? Uh, is he get, what's he, what's the game plan here, Terran? What are you trying to do? Okay, Hellions are trying to cancel the fourth. Uh, Lings poke out. Gonna scare, scare the Hellions away, although in this amount, I think the Hellions could actually out micro the Lings here. Uh, so a nice bluff by Flood. Did lose 10 drones to the Banshees, though, which is going to hurt considerably. Disrespect moves out a third, and in the meantime, uh, we can just very quickly go over the Terran production. 1-1 one, one on the way. This is full bio. Uh, and that's all you need to know. That's that's all that's going on on that side. Stim already on the field. 
rest of the combat upgrades soon to follow. Blood, in the meantime, going into Spire. 1-1. One, one. Under development for him, but it's going to hit a little bit later than the Terrans, as it were. I like the little floaty eye thing that ha uh, appears, that clips through the top of the Overseer whenever you deploy. And just respect has this little uh, Terran move out family positioned up here on the cliff. He's gonna drop on the low grounds. Uh, the Queen's focusing the Marines is setting them out of back. Okay. Ah, uh, there's not too many Zerglings. Tank shots on the Bane Marines could have been absolutely. Horrifying for the Zerg, but uh, he survives with most of them intact. He needs to drop a couple transfuse on the Queens and focus down the Banshee. Okay, there's the transfuses. Banshees are targeted down. There's the Bane Links. Connecting with the Hellbats. I mean, they got okay connections, but Marines still did their work out at the 4th. Uh, luckily, Flood got out with all his drones, so he's going to be able to resaturate down to the left, and this isn't a game-ending blow for the Zerg. In the meantime... Uh, he got a run by going and so he killed off seven SCVs in the background. Again, not the biggest pick for the Zerg, but hey, it's nice. It's decent. This respect scans, sees that Flood re expanded, and he's going to boost out a medevac. Uh, actually, not toward that base, though. Overseer does see all of this, so Flood is going to pump out more lings switched into Mutalisks. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, he did get that Spire up at quite a reasonable time. a really good tank position for disrespect. Uh, Flood did take this base on the right again, and he's going to re-expand down here. Uh, apparently pretty confident that he can hold it. Disrespect sends out a couple medevacs to shut this base down again. And this is so hard to deal with uh, as the Zerg. But I think these meta are going to be key. Uh, as you can see, Disrespect can't really unite his forces because he doesn't want to get taken out by Banelings. Oh, Queen's transfusing the Muta as well. This is really nice. Uh, so, that's going to make the Marines vulnerable against the Mutalisks. They're only fighting the Muta one at a time. Here's the attack on the right flank. Uh, the Muta harass is freeing up the Lynx. Freeing up the Lynx to deal with that. And look at that. Blood turning this around. He's going to pick off the tank. Queens are going to hold the base. And what looked like a short loss for Flood... Uh, is suddenly reversing itself. Flood, with quite the mineral bank, uh, could, well, pardon the pun, flood some zerglings onto the field. Ah, uh, Spore Crawler at the third helps pick off the medevac. You just finish it off. And this is a very respectable Muna flock for Flood as well. Yeah, because of that mineral bank, he can afford to do this mainling bust. And I think that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be a full bust on the natural, or at the third. Uh, it's it's a little bit unclear where he wants to target right now. There's the Muta. It's going to pull the army this way, so I think these guys are going to bust in here and try to get up the ramp into the production. Flood brought his whole army over, not just to hit squad of marines. For Muta do go down. Okay, Flood is actually going to split off both. He's going to try hit the army. There's a Thor in front to take damage. Some Widow Mines Burrow uh, to help deal with this as well. The Banelings don't really connect. They do keep the army busy, though. In the meantime, 11 SCBs go down. 
at the natural 12 13 and flood does not bust the main uh, but he is going to escape with some of his zerglings does he know disrespect is a little bit angry he's like hey hey you disrespecting me you disrespecting me and he's going to go for the counter push, uh, hoping that Flood is out of money and unable to reinforce. He's kind of right, kind of wrong. Uh, Flood does have uh, quite a few units on the map, but not all of them, not all of the links he could have are out on the field. He does have some Bane links. Like, if this Bio Ball were to push in uh, five seconds ago, it crushes all this. But once these Bane links morph in, it's going to be a little bit of a better proposition for the Zerg. Down goes some more SCDs, down goes some more Marines. Uh, these Mita are going to have to magic box the Thor. Banelings roll forward, and they will clean up on this side of the map, despite the Widowmine hits getting... Uh, only three kills, it looks like, actually. Flood! He is taking the lead, slowly but surely. Just trading out better than his opponent. He's going to get two more medevacs. He splits off the link so the mine shots go into the marines. Blood backs up. Now, the creep spread has been pushed back quite a bit. Uh, 14 minutes into the game, it could be knocking on the Terran store. You could see it spread uh, more to the left, more to the right. But these have been very micro-intensive fights for Flood, and Disrespect has been holding on pretty well. Amuta constantly pulling back. Uh, well, the entirety, it should be portions of Disrespect's army, but Disrespect seems to just be F2-ing back home every time these Mita push in. Mita Cloud has been softened up gradually uh, throughout the match. Disrespect has got to be careful with this Thor. Uh, you don't want to lose the meta back with the Thor in it. Disrespect should get the kill on this hatchery. He's not going to be greedy, not going to go for the drones. Baits the Lings back into the Widow Mines in theory, but the Lings move out of the mine range just in time. The Ultras are going to clean house. Last medevac picked out of the sky. Disrespect. Knocked down to 20 army supply there momentarily. Uh, the reinforcement wave is going to bump that number out. Bump that number up, but Flood... Definitely has the advantage going into this next engagement. Some bio pokes out. Ah, uh, the links get this round. That means the ultras have time to close in. No repair on the supply depot. So the ultra, well, I was going to say ultras, but it's ultra singular right now. Okay, there we go. They're in the main. Now, hold positioned SCVs and buildings are actually like the hardest counter to ultra lists. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know why the bio took this path. They should have gone, like, back here because the ultra can't fit. But, uh, they made their... They made their choices, and they're going to pay for it. Two Muta still surviving. Flood goes for the reinforce. 13 SCVs fell. Flood. Still sitting comfortably on five base. Uh, now he has mined out of minerals in the main. This right geyser is going to follow pretty soon. Natural not looking too healthy either. But then you look at the Terran space and you're like, oh yeah, he's he's been mewling the entire game. He's out at the third, totally out at the main, you know. Um, so a lot of his SCVs are just wasted on oversaturation. Now a lot of his SCVs are just straight up wasted. Uh, as the Bane Links gets us around on the planetary and connects. Kaboom. 24 SCVs go down. Mm -hmm. 
mind shots go into the ultras instead of the squishy Ling Bane, but there's two more in the back. They don't get good enough connections. They got they got decent connections. I know there was a lot of mayhem and explosions there, but uh, Terran is forced back for now. Disrespect has gathered a pretty considerable army. Blood is actually quite a bit down in supply. Uh, he has a ginormous gas bank. The mine shots soften up the bio quite a bit. And queens go down. There's no more mines back here, but Flood doesn't know that. He doesn't have an overseer with the army. Uh, in... This is a tough corner. Okay, Banelings get good enough connections. The army supply lead is closing in for Flood. Or, excuse me, uh, is is closing out for disrespect. Flood with more and more units. These widow mines are going to be off cooldown though, and that's going to bolster the source considerably. Again, you can't fault Flood here. There is the fog of war. He doesn't necessarily know how many mines are back there or which ones are off cooldown. We'll keep an eye on that CC in the bottom right uh, if it burns down. Is it going to burn down? Disrespect, still pressuring in. He kills that hatch for the fourth time this game, but Flood has expanded to the top right corner, so he's going to be totally okay. The orbital burns down! And Disrespect is on a single planetary, one orbital in the natural, and one orbital in his main. He's not mining off of two out of those three town halls. So while he, again, he has okay army supply for now, but uh, this mineral bank not looking too healthy. Oh man, that CC is in the orange. I I almost would have uh, kept the right click going as flood so that it caught on fire. Um, disrespect cannot afford to replace lost units. Flood has a massive gas bank here too. He could uh, translate into higher techiness, but he seems pretty content with this very heavy Ling Bane style. Here we go again. Yeah, all Flood needs to do is trade out one Baneling per bio unit. Um, and I mean, yes, technically speaking, the Terran trades out better there, but Disrespect doesn't have any money. It's 2,400 minerals a minute to 400. I'll let you guys do the math on that one. Metabacks are out of energy now as well. Another stim is forced. That's basically permanent damage to the last of Disrespect's units. GG is called and Flood takes game number one for in the top right corner of Eternal Empire as the Blue Protoss representing Icebound Esports, it's Turkey Dano. And in the bottom left as the Red Terran, second in the lineup for RNG Pro, he's Froby. Turkey Dano moves out a probe scout. Or is it the sky? Wait, he's opening gateway. Okay, Turkey Dano, uh, pretty well known for cannon rushing. That looks like it's a gateway opener today. Macro Turkey Dano. Froby. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, all right. You know what? You know what? I spoke too soon. There's a pro. Unless this is. Unless this is a meta proxy pylon. Unless he wants Froby to find this and to think he's cannon rushing. He does have a gas back at home. Oh, it's a proxy gate. It's a, it's a very aggressive max packs. Wait, but don't you build the first gateway out on the map? I'm confused. Oh my god, he steals the gas. Uh, so, yeah, that's very annoying for Froby. Froby is a solid mech player. Um, 
it's it's kind of pretty meta to like in the meta to play bio against protoss but Roby probably is still gonna play mech against protoss um if his ladder streams are anything to go by which you guys should check him out twitch.tv slash froby underscore All right, the proxy's been found. There's our stalker. Another stalker's being made as well. Oh, okay. The stalker could have shot the uh, the reaper there, but chose to shoot bunker. A little bit of haul damage, very little bit. Went on to that stalker. Marines can start working on the assimilator. There's the factory from Froby. Second CC is finished up. Turkey Dano drops his second Nexus. Um, and this game should normalize at some point uh, once the, the proxy gate shenanigans are taken care of. Twilight Council back at home for Turkey Dano. Have you ever noticed that mules have, like, little hands? Like, they flip it out and they, they grab it with their little creepy hands. It's like one frame. I'm getting, like, this is a high refresh monitor and I can barely see it. Anyway, Roby uh, is getting out a couple marines. Okay, is he gonna play bio? This gateway is still being super annoying from Turkey Dano. Uh, he's both getting a Blink Tech and he he's both getting a Dark Shrine and Blink Tech. This is having his cake and eating it too. on the tank from Froby. Uh, means he's finally going to clean this up. But the um the next wave of Turkey Dano uh trickery is going to be hitting soon. And a DT warps right in the base. Oh no the scan expired but there is a missile turret so it's not that hype. Okay, Froby stabilized. Throughout all of this, he's only down five workers. I mean, against a Protoss, do you expect to be down six? Uh, he can move into whatever he wants to. I don't know if you do Hellion Drop at this late in the game. Uh, he has a tech lab on the starport. Probably going to be for a second Raven. I think it's a little bit late to... Uh... Alright, he's just going to produce a Viking, actually. Um... Third CC started up in the main. Turkey Dano. Three down is third Nexus. Finishing up quite nicely. There's the forge charge about halfway complete. in the chat for that Hellion. Uh, led a very poor life. 
and then it got killed by a stalker. Um, armory. Throwing down for Froby. Now, remember, we have switched patches since RNG Pro's last match. Uh, there's a couple new mechanics in play for this matchup. So the first one is going to be shield battery. Well, I, I was looking for a shield battery to demonstrate on screen, but uh, Turkey Dano is like, nah, I'm not gonna not gonna build shield batteries to defend anywhere, uh, and that might be bad for him in the long run. So shield battery overcharge is a global cooldown ability, uh, like Retal, but you can cast it from any nexus to any shield battery within a certain radius of the nexus, and what it does is okay we're gonna have a drop in the main oh he saved the tank this is really nice play from proby he loses a viking but he gets the prism he loses the other viking uh so uh back to what i was saying um it's it's like oh god i'm gonna forget now i want to say uh it's like 200% shield recharge rate, um, so it, it recharges the shields super quick, and it doesn't cost energy. So you can use all the energy on the shield battery and then overcharge it, and it's tons of free energy uh, to heal your units with. The other one being Permacloak for Widow Mines after Armory. So Froby has an Armory, this mine has Permacloak, uh, even though he doesn't have Drill of Claws. That was pretty bloody on both sides. Froby comes uh, out ahead on army supply, though. And a lot of the remaining stalkers are pretty battered and bruised. The tanks are slowly moving forward. These uh, blue flame hellions are certainly doing many things to those charge lots. CC is still safe. These engagements are absolute mayhem, uh, and you don't see mech versus protoss very often at all. This is like a rare sight uh, that we're getting to view. I mean, very rare. Like, almost no one does it. Avalo, the base god of mech Terran, even goes bio against <laughs> protoss uh, maybe like 50% of the time. Which is a lot of bio play for him. Froby. More send some hell bats. He's gonna try to land the CC again, but in the meantime, Turkey Dano's taking a fourth, taking a fifth. Okay! I mean, this is gonna help Froby out a lot. Uh. The Stalkers shut this down again. They're not going to get the kill on it. Some brave Hellbats sacrificed their lives to save the command center. Charge lots entered the net, and Froby has taken good engagements uh, for the most part. Froby played this very well. Froby got back into this game, but unfortunately, Froby is going to lose. Like... The turtle shell has been broken. Turkey Danos cracked it open. And he's going to claim victory for Icebound. In the bottom right corner of Simulacrum, as the purple Protoss for Icebound, third in the roster, it's Riser. And in the top left, third in the roster for RNG Pro. He's a collegiate Star League champion. and former captain of the team as the Red Protoss. He's intuition. 
tuition came back from a little bit of a break. And he has been hitting the ladder hard. Working on his builds. Developing new ones. And getting ready to crush his opponents in competition. What is going on? Uh, that's not supposed to happen. Game paused. It's still doing it. So, okay, why is this very important? Uh, so, you know what? If anyone knows the proper channels, this should probably be reported to Blizzard. Uh, please feel free to clip this. Like, um, I, I wonder if Intuition can see that. So, like, okay, obviously, you know, in PvP, you're going to open up two gate. But, like, in ZvP, when you're scouting uh, your opponent's structures... Pretty much all of them are either very similar or exactly the same uh, when they're warping in. And that scouting information, I mean, it's it's not as critical uh, as it has been uh, in previous seasons, but you still want to know if your opponent's going a Gladeft all in or, like, what his gateway count is, if a building's a robo, and in order to do that, you have to click the building. Because they all look, like, the same when they're warping in. If the texture draws like that, that could be absolutely massive uh, in this EVP and in the ZVT matchups. That's really incredible. Riser going for a couple of depths to pressure intuition. adapts make it out safely they rush home Riser launches a major shade, and he's pretty committed to this. Now, all Intuition has to do to buy himself time is drop a building right here. Just drop it right there. He has a probe in position. Probe pulls out of position. Uh, the Adepts aren't going to go into the main for now. They're going to sit at the natural. There's that shield battery overcharge. Uh, unfortunately, only one unit's shooting right now. And also, unfortunately, Intuition did not drop a building in the wall. So all these Adepts are going to enter the main, and they have the opportunity to kill every single one of these probes. Uh, they've done a really bad job of it so far. Two probes going down. Intuition traps the Adepts in the main. Gets the building block off. The shades cannot go through buildings. They can go through units. If you hold position a unit here, shade goes out. Hold position a building. Uh, I mean, it, it does nothing. But if you if you build a building there, um, it's gonna it's gonna block the shade. So this is 
really in favor of intuition, I think. Oh, okay. These guys are doing more than the first 14 of depths combined. Correction, they have done more than the first 14 adepts combined. They say, you know, like, 20% of the people do 80% of the work or something like that. That was the 20% of the adepts that did 80% of the kills. Shield Battery Overcharge is going to defend all these units for a little while. Shield Battery gets taken out. Uh, the Immortal is finally in the red, but uh, Intuition's army count is also in the red. It's just such a strong defensive tool to use that Shield Battery Overcharge. It's, it's really strong, dude. It did it again! It's doing it again! Someone clip it. Wow. It's only on the gateways. The Templar Archive isn't doing it. Riser is just going to hold this off. Like, there wasn't any breaking through there for Intuition. Uh, the math didn't check out, but Intuition gets out with his units. Moving into high temps. Neither player taking a third yet at the 8 minute mark. Charged, finished, or a purple toss. Riser. It's gearing up for another push, and he does have an eight army supply lead. Three immortals on the field, but intuition's pretty close. And remember, shield battery overcharge. Oh, intuition's actually gonna push out. Uh, he's winning this. Archons can break through four shields. You, you don't see it too often, but definitely a utility there. Ooh, the Immortals are caught in the background. Lucinated Zealots run out to try and save the Immortals. But Intuition is doing a great job of uh, making Riser go on the retreat. He gets a kill on an Archon. He's going to get a kill on the Sentry next. Look at... Zap. Power overwhelming. Zap. Power overwhelming. But has he overextended? He's still down in army supply. So uh, only two meat shields for the actual DPS units of this army. Oh, he zaps down. Another immortal. There's the overcharge. These are invincible zealots. Oh my god, dude. Neither player can kill the other. One Archon. 
or excuse me, one immortal is sacrificed. Two of them make it out. In the meantime, Riser launches a counter attack. Uh, he got quite a couple probe kills in the background. Uh, they weren't playing with WCS game heart. Or, um, excuse me, sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, but, Riser. In, at the top, purity and industry. As the teal toss for Icebound, it's Nicro. And on the right side, as the blue Zerg for RNG Pro, he's Prototype. Proto goes hatch first. It's kind of weird when the health bar is floating up there. Standard openings on both sides. I mean... What the hell, dude? Alright, we're, we're not going to remark on it anymore. But, yeah, that's a very consistent glitch. Like, normally when you talk about these skin glitches or whatever, uh, and they first come out, like, it happens... Either, like, on a specific map or just every once in a while, but this is... The third time in two games, so... Uh, we'll see how that works out in the ZVP. Nicro brings his probe home. Micro patrolling a stalker. He's expecting this overlord to come in, but the overlord's gonna come in from an angle where he will scout the robo no matter what. Uh, the stalker isn't in position to kill this dude before he can get the scout off. He thought about it. There's the full scout. Proto takes a third. So, Icebound, if they win this map, We'll take the series. Three to one. Prototype, trying to bring it back for Risen and uh, take us to the ace map.
that this is a very dicey encounter. The queens can't get in on top of the prism, so another warpin is going to happen. They're trying to walk over there. Uh, the roaches are all cleaned up. This immortal is dealing tons and tons of damage. Eight kills on it already. The drones are drafted into the fight. Uh, not very good against zealots, though. There comes some more lings. There comes some more roaches. Prototype temporarily abandons the main. He's going to back out here. Okay, he goes back in. The queens this time are on the prism. Uh, they will get the kill, but not before another warp in happens. If Nitro gets cleaned up here, he's probably just going to uh, recall. This is still holdable for Prototype. He's only down three workers. A couple more now, but uh, he can definitely pull back from this since he still has all the hatcheries. Especially if he gets the kill on the Immortal. Down it goes. Prototype did take the worst of those trades. I mean, he's Zerg. You, you expect to trade out a little bit less efficiently than your opponents, but he's still strong. He's down seven workers. However, he can uh, he can remake them pretty quickly. Nitro, when he's continuing the pressure, rather than probe out of it, uh, he's just going to make more charge lots. Proto. Isn't going to replenish his economy. He's just going to make more roaches, more lings. Uh, he's only mining off of one gas, so the amount of roaches he can actually make are pretty limited. Let's see, only eight gas to replenish. It's a very ling heavy defense. Uh, some of the units out of position, not firing. It's going to take every shot. Every shot is going to count. Ooh, the drones hold position. So, Nitro needs to use. Uh, Micro to eight click the drones and clear a path to the queens or gun them down with the stalkers. There's still a couple transfuses here as well. Prototype is playing this out so well, uh, given the the very tiny tool set that he has on offer. But another nine drones have fallen. Queens are backed into a corner and it's not going to be enough. GG is called. Nicro takes the match three to one in favor of Icebound. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Renegade. Uh, I will be at back in seven hours at 5 a.m. EDT for the ESL Asia server brand open. Well, weekly open. Uh, we'll be back again at 7 p.m. tomorrow for the America server open. And in between then, well, I mean like pretty soon after this cast uh, i'm gonna reboot the stream and I'm gonna play some total war warhammer 2 with my friend kugel but in the meantime we'll find someone wholesome to raid thank you guys so much for watching i've been renegade